Hi there, and welcome to this video about Solid Thinking Compose. Today is the last step of the 12 steps to Navier-Stokes equation, which is step number 12, and this is a channel flow. So let's get started. We have now here the uh, my Python notebook from Lorena Barba, and in this we have the same equations like in step number 11, so I go rather quickly about them. The only difference is that we have a source term right over here, which um, indicates the pressure um, in the x direction, so it's in the u momentum. So, um, just quickly going over there, we have the u momentum, the v momentum, and the pressure velocity relation with the Poisson equation. Then we have to discretize those equations, so for the u momentum, the forward discretization in time for the derivatives and backwards in space. And then we have the pressure equation over here. And this we will solve in a pseudo time step, which um, is about 50 or so, where we assume to, to have converged this equation between the pressure and the velocity. So solving for the u and v momentum uh, in the next time step, we get those two equations. And solving for the pressure right over here, um, in the Poisson equation. So the only thing which is different from step number 11 is uh, the source term f and the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions in this case are initially zero everywhere, then we have a periodic boundary condition at the x walls, so zero and two. We have the velocity to be zero at the bottom and the top of the channel, and the pr pressure different uh, the pr pressure differential is zero in y direction, also at the top and the bottom of the channel. And f, the source term is one everywhere, and it's only affecting the x direction, as stated over here. All right, I think we can just quickly go to the implementation. So I uh, minimize the, uh, the um, functions over here. I go in them when we need them. So starting with the main program, we have here the imports, as always, NumPy, Matplotlib, and Access3D for a um, 3D projection um, uh, plot, plotting. Then the variable declarations, we have the same as always, nx and y, the number of grid points, number of time steps, the number of pseudo time steps, we have the c equals 1. I really don't know why that's in there. So I think we don't need it. It will be embarrassing if we do. Alright, um, we have the x, the spacing of the grid points, the y, the spacing of the grid points in y direction. Then we have x and y, and also as a mesh grid for plotting. We have the physical variables, which is uh, rho, new, f, and dt, time step, the initial conditions, and now we're solving this time differently, like in step number 11, where we solve for a fixed number of time steps. We're now solving until the difference in u for two consecutive um, iterations is small enough. So we're doing that as long as the difference is bigger than 0.001. And the calculation goes like this, we copy that, we build up b, which is part of the Poisson equation, we um, build up the, the full Poisson equations, and those two are function calls of the functions over here. So there are the equations for uh, b, and for the pressure Poisson periodic. So also the, the wall boundary conditions are in there as well, because um, part of the boundary conditions affect the pressure field and so you have to um, you have to respect them in, in your pressure equation which is the Poisson equation and having solved the pseudo Poisson equation and pseudo time step we now can solve u and v so for um, the iteration loop uh, until it's converged u and v is calculated and we are setting all the boundary conditions right over here. So they are pretty pretty much uh, boundary conditions. So the periodic boundary conditions at x equals 2, the periodic equation uh, boundary condition at x equals 0 for both u and v, 
and then we have finally the the velocities at the wall to be zero at y equal zero or two and to calculate the difference which is our criterion to um, to break the, the iteration loop we calculate it with the sum or with sum function of numpy and we also have a step count which gets incremented with each iteration loop so we can after having reached this conversion con convergence criteria we can print the step count to see how many iterations we we had um yeah and then finally do a plotting we do the same results um twice we do the plotting twice because what there's um if you plot all the values it might get a little bit too small so there's a lot of different values but you can help with um this syntax so you get uh, with this double colon sign the third value is um the step size so every third value is all uh, considered and how this looks like i will show you in a minute so we're executing it and the bottom one is the one which has step size one which is the default value and the top is with a referred value printed you can see um you can see that the the scheme much more better if you use fewer values and this can, can come in handy for um yeah for for large data sets yeah all right that concludes this video and the 12 steps um to navi stokes in python i hope you enjoyed the series